Does my background look okay? Yes, it does. And you're live. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to yet another installment in the HU webinar series. Uh, my name is Brian Morris. I am a senior admissions counselor here at Harrisburg University. Real quick before we get things started, I'd just like to let everyone know um, that you are muted. However, we do encourage you to ask questions through the chat function on Microsoft Teams. We will be addressing questions towards the end of the webinar, um, so make sure you ask those questions throughout. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded as all of our previous webinars, including one on student services and career services. So I'll be posting that link in the chat. So that way, if you want to rewatch this webinar or one of the other previous webinars, you will be able to. Um, so today we have two excellent guests here to speak to you a little bit about our computer information science program, as well as information systems and information technology, uh, Dr. Sardari and Professor Brian Gray. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it off to Dr. Sardari. Thank you very much, Brian, and hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our presentation for the two amazing programs that here we have at Harrisburg University. This is Dr. Saeed Esmaili. I am the program director for the computer and information sciences, as well as the information systems and information technology. I also have uh, Professor Brian Gray with me today, who will help me go over the presentation and basically introducing you to the uh, CISC program, as well as the ISIT program that we have. So let me just jump into the presentation. Uh, and uh, of course, as Brian mentioned at the beginning, if you have questions and comments, please feel free to type them in that chat box that you have, and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Now, uh, before uh, getting into the details of the computer science and the program, let me introduce you the amazing team that I am uh, working with. We have uh, various, um, uh, we have faculty from various backgrounds, and uh, with a lot of experience, I should, I should tell you, from industry. We have people who have, who have worked for long times in, in, in high position ranks in, in industry, and we, have, we are now using, for example, their expertise and their experience in our classes. We also have recent graduates that are basically bringing youth and energy to the program as well. So I'm privileged and I'm very glad to work with this amazing team and I'm pretty sure once you are here and you're taking our courses you will enjoy uh, the lectures from every single faculty that you have. Uh, we have Dr. Latif, uh, Brian Gregg, Doc Ramba, Da Ching, uh, Nushwan, Jean, Mike Egg, Phil, Mina, Ron Jones and Chad Chu. These are primarily the faculty that you are uh, where you will have courses in our computer science program from very, I mean, uh, ranging from the 100 level classes, the first class that you'll see all the way to your uh, graduation. And again, uh, all the information is available for you throughout our uh, website and you can find the information, you can find the contact details and you can start communicating with the faculty and learn more about our programs and our offerings. Behind uh, all of the programs that we have here at Harrisburg University is a philosophy that all of our graduates, when they graduate, they have to be competent in, in this, in today's world. And in order to make sure that they do have the right skills and the right tools in order to be successful in, the career, in their careers, we want to make sure that they, they cover and they master these competencies that we have. We call them core competency and we call them Harrisburg University core competencies. All of the other, all of the programs also then derive their goals, their educational objectives based on these uh, core competencies. You can see the list of CISC program goals on the right side, which I'm not going to basically bore you and uh, read through them, but I just want to tell you that basically what we are, we are trying to make sure, we want to make sure our students when graduate from our CISC uh, program, they are capable, well-rounded uh, graduates who can get the job done. If it's a programming uh, assignment, if it's a networking assignment, if it's a cybersecurity attack that needs to be resolved, if it's a challenge that students need to come up with a new design, new methodology, new 
architecture, we want to make sure our students are capable of tackling these hard problems. And again, these are based on the core competencies that we have. You can read more about the core competencies and about the assessment, about all the details that goes into those core competencies, of course, throughout, throughout our publications uh, available on our website. Along those lines, along those core competency lines, uh, there are some features that are, I, 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 I think they are kind of unique to Harrisburg University and in particular to the environment that we developed and the university has developed for us faculty and students to make sure that they can work in this environment. Uh, we want to make sure, first of all, all of our classes are highly experiential, meaning that students are engaged in activities, in projects, in labs, and faculty are helping them throughout this process. We are not siloed in classrooms and covering just lectures and theoretical stuff. Yes, that is the boring part of the stuff, but we will cover that, but we will get to the fun part as well. Those are projects. Those are experiential learning projects that you will go through uh, real problems with the supervision of your faculty. You will go through the projects. You will have hands on labs, programming assignments, network designs and all of those aspects of computer science that you will see. Also, we want to make sure our courses are highly applied. We are not covering the stuff that are not, for example, used or applicable in today's world. We constantly monitor the market. We constantly get feedback from our partners in industry and we, we adjust, we add courses, we add lesson plans to make sure that what you learn in class will be something that you will use in your work in your work. So it's not something that purely um, hypothetical or theoretical, if you will, but you will learn and you will basically practice what you've learned in your in your life. Uh, another aspect of the programs, and again, these are general to Harrisburg University programs, and we as CISC programs and ISIT, of course, observe these kind, kind of guidelines and follow these uh, characteristics of Harrisburg University is another aspect is highly, highly available. And that means that we want to make sure our students get the resources that they want. That includes faculty contact, that includes um, support from the faculty team and from everyone here at Harrisburg community. So you will have a great support team all throughout your ed education here. If you need if you need help with some uh, courses, if you need help with some material, you can reach out to your faculty. If you need help with your, for example, registration, we have a great registration team. If you need questions with your if you have challenges with the IT uh, connectivity of your courses or any other IT related issue. We have a great IT support team, so we have we want to make sure that everything is available for your successful um, education here at Harrisburg University. And finally, I want to say we are highly collaborative. That includes both students and faculty as opposed to other universities that they have departments, they have uh, well, for example, confined uh, programs that are not collaborating or working each with each other, we do have a very dynamic, highly multidisciplinary culture in our university. Our faculty are working together from various programs. We have faculty who are teaching in our computer science program. They are also teaching in other programs, math, math program, in inter, inter, uh, integrative sciences program, in our graduate programs. So all of the faculty are collaborating together and that brings new ideas to the table. That brings and opens up opportunities for you students who can now select projects, define ideas and work on your uh, very interesting ideas that you develop and that basically is not there is no uh, limitations in terms of your idea or you, the work that you want to do. And this collaboration is something that we all enjoy both as faculty and of course you will enjoy it as your as as our students as well. Uh, 
in the experiential learning track, I'm going to uh, ask Brian to kind of give you an idea of what is this experiential learning track that is embedded in all of our programs, because I know he has worked with a lot of students in our projects. Basically, this experiential learning track is the track that helps students to develop and build their own projects, of course, with the guidance of a supervising faculty. So Brian, if you can explain a little bit more about the experiential learning, that will be great. Uh, your microphone is mute, uh, Brian. Thank you. Let me try that again. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Brian Gray. I am in uh, the Computer and Information Sciences program at the undergrad and the graduate level. Uh, and as as Dr. Uh, Sadari had said, um, I do a lot with, I, I, I'm very involved in the projects and potentially in the upcoming internship uh, transition that we're going to be doing because of our current um, situation in the world. Uh, but so the project uh, one, project two, uh, sometimes junior, senior project, depending on how you, know, you hear it talked about, are faculty guided independent study uh, experiences. Uh, we have a framework set up in the computer science uh, program for students to be able to come up with their own idea or come to a faculty member who has said, hey, I have experience in databases or I have experience in software engineering or I'm a computer uh, cybersecurity expert. Great, come to us and we have ideas or you can come to us with your own ideas. And then from there, we guide you through the process of research, of all sorts of background. Uh, and then that's typically your project one. Project two is, in, is a real world implementation of that project. Um, it could be anything from setting up a mobile e-commerce site to uh, developing a neural network by hand to let me think of what else. I've had students work on mathematical proofs. I've had students set up AIs to uh, create narratives based on uh, documents that are fed to it. All sorts of things. Um, additionally, uh, there is that CISC 365 internship and Typically, what we ask students to do is to find an internship, go out to Highmark or go out to the state or go out to somewhere, you know, from where they're from and secure what we would classically think of as an internship where you work, you know, in a business um, kind of being the understudy. And yeah, OK, that's a little bit of go get coffee, but it's also a lot of OK, here's how we, you know, set up a server or here's how we configure this uh, nightly process to run. Here's how we uh, build a new uh, a new module onto our application from, you know, talking to user requirements all the way through the end. Uh, but given what's going on in the world with with the coronavirus uh, crisis and uh, you, you know, that's the first mention of coronavirus, so you can check that off on your bingo card. Um, we are also looking at implementing things in the university now because we have a lot of expertise. I've spent 12, year, 12 years in industry before I came to the university. Uh, Ron Jones spent a lot of time in industry. Mina Gabriel, Doug Rumboss, some time in industry. So we've got people who have had experience uh, being members of teams and leading teams. And so in, in an effort to both better our university and also to make uh, make life easier for students so students don't have to get behind, you know, given the current circumstances, we are going to start offering internships in the university as well uh, under the, the leadership of a faculty member with the experience. And I can tell you that, you know, uh, not just in projects where I tend to be a little more hands off because it is it is self guided, you know, with with some help from faculty, but also now in this internship, you know, okay, this is how we are going to develop something. We're going to go, we're going to sit down with the internal customer and we're going to say, okay, what do you need? Okay, this is what I'm hearing. How do we design it? Okay, and then we'll go back and I'll, I'll lead the team of one to three developers or, you know, Ron Jones will set up the network or whatever. So th this is the goal of Harrisburg University is not just to give you that fundamental theoretical background, but also then to give you some real world application for that. So you're not walking into your first job going, you know, I know what the textbook said, but I've never had anyone explain to me how this is applicable to uh, to to a job in the real world. You'll get that in the classroom, but then you also get that in these. You can't see what I'm pointing at, but I'm pointing at the slides 
in these experiential learning classes and this experiential learning track. OK, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so as as Brian just mentioned, this is a great way to basically prepare you for your first uh, your first uh, career down the road. Now, let's get back to our program, now, computer science. Well, when we talk about computer science, most often people think about programs and coding and computers, and that is not that that is that is not wrong. That is correct, but that is not the whole picture. Computer science uh, in particular can be considered as an applied mathematics is one way that we can uh, we can basically solve sometimes challenging problems using computers. So a computer scientist is a person who uses her skills, uh, mathematical, logical thinking and and logical reasoning uh, uh, skills that she will develop during their, uh, their studies in order to solve interesting problems and with the with the with the uh, situations that we are facing these days the need for computer scientists the need for people who can logical logically and mathematically think and solve problems and develop solutions is increasing and that is exactly what a computer scientist does for example i just kind of um, share with you some examples of the actual works of a computer scientist in this slide. When you are searching, for example, something on Google or any search engine that we, we normally do every day, what happens is behind the scene, there are many algorithms running and the algorithm is just a sequence of well-defined steps or processes that tells a computer or a machine or any kind of other uh, machinery, if you will, what to do or what are the next steps to be done. Now, behind the scene, there are many algorithms running in order to give you the result for that search. For example, when you search Harrisburg University on Google, less than a second, in less than a second, almost five million records have been searched. Now, how is that possible? How, how should you, for example, record them? How should you keep them in your file? Or where do you have to store them so you can, you can search 5 million records in less than a second? And that's, for example, called indexing. Well, one of the algorithms that Google uses is, is document indexing. Well, what is indexing? Again, that is a mathematical concept behind it. Other search engines may use another algorithm. So you may come up as a computer scientist with your own searching algorithm, with your own indexing algorithm, which can improve or beat, for example, this search time. And those are the problems or challenges that computer scientists are always thinking and trying to uh, trying to uh, improve. On the bottom right, you can also you you always we always use navigation systems on your phone on your car and uh, and every everybody these days use navigation systems. Well, again, behind this kind of uh, rendering that we are seeing right now, there are many algorithms that are running again, finding the best path between the destination and you between your uh, between the two points that you're searching for. For example, here I'm looking at the address between, for example, Harrisburg University, both in Harrisburg and in, in, in Philadelphia. So there are different paths. There are different timelines depending on the uh, parameters, depending on the hour, depending on the traffic. It can change. So these algorithms consider all those parameters into account and basically make the suggestion or work that. We can also have another uh, aspect of computer science. Look at it as a as a pure coding example. On top right, you says, for example, you can see that a new kernel. And by the way, kernel is the core of your operating system, is the program which is always running on your system and keeps everything in 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 row. It it basically uh, allows other programs to run and it basically allows your computer to work. Your computer is a piece of hardware. It has it has uh, and then it needs some manager, if you will, to control everything. And that is your operating system. And kernel is the heart of your operating system. So people are building those kernels. There are people who are coding and who are writing, for example, programs to make your operating system faster and more reliable. Windows 
comes up with, for example, Microsoft comes up with updates or improvements to Windows every now and then, and you can see that they come up with new flavors of Windows. They add some new features. They remove some bugs. They improve the security. They improve, for example, the stability of the system. And Linux is, of course, one uh, kernel, which is an open source, meaning that it's freely available. So people can, computer scientists, can write that code, can come up with new ideas to improve the performance of your machine. Computer scientists can also uh, solve some pro some mathematical problems. A couple of months ago, there was a um, uh, decade-old uh, computer science program uh, problem which was dealing with the sensitivity of uh, binary calculations, and a mathematician basically came up with the solution for that for that problem. So you can see that it is not necessarily coding or working with the computers, but the logical thinking, the mathematical thinking, the uh, sound reasoning that you will learn throughout your studies will guide you and will help you to work with computers, of course, to implement your your solution. And that is a gist of uh, a gist of, for example, the big picture of computer science. Also, what people might be interested when they are deciding what to do or when they are trying to go into a, um, a university, they want to want to make, they want to see what are the prospects of their graduate uh, of their degrees or what are the prospects of the job opportunities. Well, I think if you look at the I mean uh, look at the Department of Labor Statistics, you will see that computer and information sciences programs are among the ones which has the highest. Uh, uh, prospects in terms of having the job openings. With the current situation, of course, as you can see, everyone is now moving into online environments. That means that there are now a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for pe people with the right skills, with the right information who can help and who can build this transition and who can sustain that work. Because again, in the new norm after this uh, pandemic, we will have a lot of opportunities for people with these skills who can work, who can get the job done, once we get there, uh, according to the Department of Labor, uh, we will have a 12% growth from 2018 to 2028 for the computer and information sciences program. And this will add about 50, uh, 50, 546,000 new jobs to the market for computer information sciences uh, graduates. On the other figures on this uh, slide, you will see some uh, ideas or some numbers about the salaries for computer science graduates. Well, of course, these are just various numbers that give you an idea. It does not necessarily mean that are the guaranteed starting position uh, pays. However, it will give you an idea of the, of the field. It depends, of course, on the, uh, the exact position that you will uh, get. It depends on the location where you're going to work. Uh, for example, uh, if you are working in California, of course, because of the differences, because of the location, there might be a pay difference between the place that you work and the East Coast. So we will have these differences, but again, it, it will give you an idea. You're looking at about a $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 salary, depending on the position, again, that you're looking for. Again, various job opportunities. It can be a, a computer scientist can become a software developer. That's a programmer. A lot of companies are looking for software developers. A lot of companies develop their in-house softwares in order to address their businesses, um, um, in order to basically carry out their businesses. A database administrator, computer hardware engineer, hardware designer, computer system analyst, person who can basically consult and provide ideas and best uh, practices to companies to forward with their uh, computer needs. Computer network architects, web developers, computer uh, researchers. So one of the other uh, uh, pathways which is open for our computer science and almost all of our graduates over here is of course, pursuing your uh, and continuing your education into a higher degrees. You can, you can get your master's in computer science or you can then continue to be a PhD student in research and conduct research in graduate in, in computer science. And our programs and our school allows for and created interesting paths for students who are uh, who are who has shown, for example, successful um, track record in order to get their batch, uh, get their masters in a condensed version in a five year MSBS program. It will be basically saving you one year in order to grade in order to get your 
bachelor as well as your master's program while you're basically sharing some graduate courses in your last undergraduate year. So these are the paths that we will have for computer science down the road. Uh, then I want to talk about a little bit about the details of the courses that you will see. I'm not going to dive deep into this slide or going to kind of confuse you, but I'm just going to give you the whole the overall picture of our of our programs. All of the HU undergraduate programs should complete 120 credits or semester hours in order to graduate. Some of them are general education classes uh, that covers and make sure that you get the foundation stuff um, in place. We do have some uh, experiential learning courses that we discussed at the beginning of this presentation. We do have foundation courses that includes mathematics and English literature, including composition, uh, communication, and so forth. And we do have some program specific courses. Those program specific courses are the courses that we have developed in order to make sure that you cover all the knowledge areas that you should uh, gain and you should be proficient when you graduate from HU. Of course, every student then once completing these core courses, you will have a series of electives available. Once you use one, the electives will then allow you to craft your own pathway for your graduation and the way and for de depending on your interests and depending on your career goals. If you want to become a cybersecurity expert, well, you can take and you can select the 400 and 300 level courses for your electives in the cybersecurity domain. We do have an expert, uh, we do have great experts uh, in house for cybersecurity that you can work with them and you can take their courses. If you are interested in database administration, then you can take courses in database administration and you can complete your electives on database. If you want to be a web developer, you can take courses on web developer. If you are interested in mobile computation or AI or or IOT, again, these are all courses that we develop and we add to the uh, to the uh, elective courses that will open up opportunities for you based on your interest and based on your career path. Harrisburg University is certified and it's accredited by uh, middle states uh, uh, on higher education to basically um, uh, grant uh, degrees and perform uh, in higher education area. That is a uh, um, a, a group sanctions by uh, sanctioned by the uh, Department of Education and licenses universities to basically perform. This is uh, a kind of a regional uh, body which works in New York, um, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and then uh, allows us to basically uh, perform uh, give degrees to our students. On top of this um, uh, certification, Computer and Information Sciences program has recently uh, certified and accredited by ABIT. ABIT is, a, uh, is an uh, external prestigious organization which basically comes to the school and checks for the resources and makes sure the program meets the requirements of, of high education, of high standards. So then students get uh, that kind of education. Uh, I think Brian has more information on ABIT certification and how it basically uh, not only shows, not only it's just a prestigious addition to the program, but it, all, it, all, it also goes deeper than just, the, uh, just that title. So Brian, if you can just explain a little bit more about the meaning of the ABIT process, uh, that will be great. So, um, <clears throat> oh, there we go. So, it, you know, in, in brief, uh, ABET is is an engineering and technology uh, accreditation body, and so what this means is not just that we are, a, a, you know, a college, a, a university, but that we are adhering to the the, the best current practices. That we are being data driven. That we are striving for constant improvement, both in the integration of the technology that we are teaching in the classroom, but also just in our approaches, right? So this is showing that we have uh, rigorous and and standardized and documented uh, procedures, which I know that that sounds kind of esoteric, but but the practical thing for you is this means that uh, professors here 
are following best practices, that you are going to be in a classroom with somebody who is trying to engage and interact with you and teach you using uh, the best methodologies that we, we currently know of, that we currently have, and that we are constantly striving to improve our content, our delivery, our course in general, which not everybody has. You're not gonna walk into a lecture room at Harrisburg University where there's 150 people sitting with you and it's sage on a stage and you never get to meet that professor and you're always talking to some TA. That does happen at some schools. You're not gonna have that here. And that's, by the way, not the best way to learn. You know, it, it, you, you need that kind of personal interaction. You need that back and forth. And that's something that we all strive for here. And that's what this, that's what this little badge means. And it helps you, it can help you in uh, applying for certain positions, some positions, especially government positions, uh, will not accept applicants without knowing that they are from an ABET accredited school. So this is a wonderful thing, both for your time here and your time after being at Harrisburg. Thank you, Brian. Uh, just uh, a couple of examples of the collaborations and the opportunities for our students. Uh, Harrisburg University is working with a lot of uh, companies locally uh, in order to provide uh, opportunities for our students to work as interns. Also, if there are openings and they are looking for uh, for applicants and, they can, and we can then work closely with them and we will have opportunities for our students to become uh, employed in their companies. One of them, for example, is Miss IQ Technologies. Uh, uh, the CEO, Mr. Andrew Hacker, is also a faculty at Harrisburg University. He works with HU and he helps us with the students uh, uh, basically finding internship and positions. Another company is also locally in Harrisburg. Wild Fig is a, is a company that provides a lot of opportunities for our students in order to work and the internship. Uh, since I mentioned about work, um, uh, opportunities. I also want to quickly mention that there are also work study opportunities for our students. Students can work as TAs if they, of course, uh, successfully um, show competence in the, in the courses. They can help other students throughout their education and it's a kind of a paid position, uh, flexible hours that students can work with other uh, peer students. Uh, there are opportunities for students to participate in various research activities across the campus. Uh, faculty may have external fundings uh, and they're doing some research. They are looking for uh, undergraduate students or research assistants. They can work with them. There are also faculty who are working on presidential research Research grants. This is an in-house research uh, funded by the university and faculty are basically using undergraduate students to help with the research activities. And these are great opportunities for students also to learn and to practice uh, research and basically go, go through this process. Of course, we have other opportunities to be, uh, for undergraduates to become TAs, to become graders, and sometimes we have summer camps. Students can develop and help with the development and offering of the summer camp courses. There are other on-campus jobs as well, which you can, of course, reach to our student services for the full list of op openings and, pos and positions as they open up. So I just want to give you the idea that there are opportunities for students uh, and of course they change or uh, they, they will improve, uh, they will develop as we have new positions available and, they, uh, and you have to basically follow with uh, the faculty, with the program and with the student services. That was in a nutshell about the CISC program. Of course, you'll have questions and we'll get to those, uh, but now let me just I uh, changed the gear and a little bit talk about the information systems and information technology program, which is essentially derived by the need of the industry in terms of combining the concepts of business administration and combining the concepts of information technology. Well, we had the computer and information sciences program. It, it is a uh, it's a well established and uh, highly uh, attended and highly sought after program here at Harrisburg University. And then we thought that now we can basically expand our resources and we can now introduce a new program which allows students to basically focus on IT positions or work with, uh, uh, who can work with businesses in order to solve their business IT needs. Uh, ISIT, Information System Information Technology, basically tries to marry 
on one end information systems, which is basically the concepts, the resources, the processes that help companies and businesses manage their data. Data is a huge asset these days for companies and they make a lot of decisions with the data that they have. They target their audiences, they target their customers, they send out specific um, uh, products to the customers based on the data that they have collected. And they make a lot of analytics and they do perform a lot of analytics on their data in order to be successful businesses. This information system then sits on top of an information technology. There are computers, there are networks, there are, uh, there are hardware and software pieces which allows the information systems to work and allows the managers, the business owners to make decisions and to see the reports, to get the idea and to make actions. And this ISIT program basically tries to make sure that we have those people ready for the job. As you can look at the list of the job opportunities or job possibilities or career paths, for our ISIT graduates, you can see we have a range of IT support people. We have technical support um, 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 uh, positions. We have system administrators, help desk analysts. These are extremely um, uh, sought after positions that are now developing and there are there is a shortage of people with enough knowledge and expertise and experience of course uh, tackling these openings and again this program hopefully will give you the right tools and skill set in order to get the job done within the scope of IT and um, uh, information systems and information technology. Information systems and information technology program goals are listed over here. In a nutshell, again, I can tell you that we want to make sure our graduates of information systems and information technology can get the job done in terms of the IT, can walk into a company, set up a network, set up everyone's station and run the system and run the business in terms of the IT. A quick note about the differences between ISIT and CISC. Uh, CISC is more uh, toward uh, the career paths are different as you just saw, for example, the positions that an IT administrator or an ISIT graduate will have are different from the position of a computer scientist. A programmer, a web developer, a network architect is different from a person who makes sure that the system runs smoothly, the person who designs the network, the person who checks the security, uh, for example, concerns of a network. Those are IT administrators. Those are information systems experts who know the details of business. So a little bit hands on a little a more hands on projects, more hands on labs are for ISIT rather than CISC. And of course, a little bit of less stress on math courses on ISIT will be the differences that you have. Uh, before we get to the questions, I want to make sure that if Brian, do you have anything to add or we can jump into the questions? Uh, this slide is important. Make sure, I mean, and, uh, my email is listed over there. Brian's is, email is over there. Make sure you keep the note and if you have any questions after this or down the road, feel free to shoot us an email and we will get back to you uh, with our, so, uh, we'll get back to you. Thank you. And Brian, do you want to, you're good? No, let's let's start with questions because. OK, great. So I'm, I'm, better in a, I'm better in a freestyle environment anyway. OK. All right, well, then we will get started with the Q&A portion over here and please feel free to submit questions as we progress here. Um, the first one is from an anonymous student. They ask what types of computer would you recommend for students to get while taking this major and how much storage space should the computer have? Well, uh, I, I, I give a general uh, answer to this question. It really depends on the course and depends on the type of project that you are working on. But in general, uh, these days, any decent or any newly designed computer that you buy will get the job done for our courses. Uh, of course, we are uh, right now the computers are coming with uh, enough RAM or enough storage that we can work on that. Also, all the students have some sort of uh, cloud services attached to their accounts. So it is not something that you should worry about. Hey, I need a computer with uh, one terabyte of hard drive or no, it's not enough. Or what is the RAM? Should I go with four gigs or eight gigs or 16 gigs or what? How should I decide that? Well, uh, for most of the 
programming assignments and courses, uh, almost a computer which has built in the last, I should say, four or five years should be enough for you. Uh, if you are using a computer which is extremely old, maybe running a Windows XP or Windows Vista, uh, that may need to be changed. But other than that, uh, uh, it should be uh, a, a, a decent uh, new design computer should work. We also have a, a website which basically provides the details of the minimum requirements of a system, which is basically the requirements of a, of a which is basically the specs of a regular computer these days, and that should be fine. So I'm not uh, expecting anyone to come up with the top of the line computers, uh, a very uh, normal, I would say a very uh, normal basic system should do the job. Uh, Brian, do you want to add anything about the details of computers? No, I, I would do. The only thing I would say is um, it, Windows machines or Linux machines, we're going to be able to work with a little easier. Uh, Mac machines are fine too. Uh, some of our faculty work with Macs actually, uh, but we are Generally speaking, computer science people tend to be a little more familiar with um, with Windows and Linux machines. So, you know, use what you use. Really, anything. Uh, I remember uh, we looked at the specs that are recommended, and 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 this piece of paper could meet most of those specs. So, um, yeah, anything anything that you get, you know, a couple hundred dollar off the shelf. The only thing I would I would caution you against is. Uh, a Chromebook or equivalent. That is not a good call. You should be getting an actual computer of some sort. Um, but other than that, you know, anything, anything that can run, you know, Windows 10 or the modern um, Mac equivalent or the most recent distro of a of a Linux machine will have enough sauce on it that it'll it'll work. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you. This next question from Maggie Coleman is uh, very pertinent now with uh, online education. She asks, do you work with Google Classroom during online classes? Uh, no, the environments that we have for our classes and make sure my microphone is not mute now. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have uh, we do have uh, classes through our uh, le learning management system, which is Canvas, which is connected to our Adobe Connect learning environment. So all of the classes uh, are done and performed through Adobe Connect. And once you become a Harrisburg University student, you will get access to that uh, to that platform and you can and we can communicate over there. Of course, there are faculty who can select other resources and communicate with their students off the, uh, for example, off the hours or for office hours or something like that. But the classes uh, and the uh, resources of the classes will be delivered through Adobe Connect, which is a platform for online uh, communication with classes. All right, I had a couple of students to ask questions about cybersecurity, specifically if they're interested in a career in cybersecurity, would the CISC program be a good fit for them? Uh, well, yes, it depends what type of cybersecurity you're looking at. We have uh, we have uh, a series of courses designed and basically delivered for cybersecurity at our 300 level courses, 300, 400 level courses, which prepare students to basically start some sort of uh, practices and also work with some software in order to perform, let's say, penetration testing, um, checking the network and making sure the network security is up and running. We do have some we do have some lessons covering the legal and ethical consideration, best practices covering the uh, cybersecurity. So the pro the courses that we have over here prepares definitely a, a computer information sciences student in order to find a career in uh, cybersecurity. There uh, there are some considerations or thoughts about uh, developing a cybersecurity, for example, track or program, but right now we do have courses uh, that offer cybersecurity uh, um, classes and concepts for students. So I would say yes, it is definitely uh, a, an opportunity, and we do have a couple of uh, well qualified uh, people with expertise on cybersecurity with years of experience in the industry on cybersecurity. 
All right, great. And here was another popular question. Um, what programming languages will students work with in the computer information science program? OK, it's a great question. Uh, before I get into the details of a specific programming uh, language, I want to just give this general concept that programming language or the program uh, or that specific language is just a tool that a computer scientist will use in order to implement his algorithm, his or her algorithm. So once you design the algorithm, once you have your logical thinking, when you have the flow chart of the program, when you have the step by step actions that you want to take, the only thing is to implement that algorithm on a computer. And in order to do that, you need a programming language. Well, we are now using Python in most of our classes. In particular, our first programming one class is Python. However, there are other programming languages that you will see and you will get exposure to in our other classes. For example, in our operating systems class, you will see some flavors and some concepts or scripts from C programming language. That is the language of operating systems. Uh, when you get into other classes, for example, web development, you learn about HTML program. You learn about uh, job <laughs> scripting. So those are other programming languages that you will get exposure to and you will learn something about it. But remember, Programming languages are is just about the syntax. Of course, there are some details into that, but once you get, once you know how to design and implement your code, the rest is just syntax and just a little bit of uh, basically playing around with the computer, with the language and the compiler, if it's a compiled language, to get that up and running. Uh, but to answer your question in particular, I would say uh, Python is the course that most of our classes are basically uh, built built upon that. And and let me uh, let me jump in here and just uh, say that one of the main differences, one of the things that makes a computer science uh, education different than get going to a technical school and there's nothing wrong with going to a technical school or getting a, a Microsoft certification or, or whatever is is that flexibility right by the time you are a, a full-on computer science major and, and that's usually by the time you're done your sophomore year right you'll have done all your background courses your your uh, the courses that um would co normally constitute a minor in in computer science uh you've got the background right you know how to code you know how to do algorithms you know how to do data structures you, you've got the basics and then from there you get into the idea is that you know we assume that you are comfortable enough with the concepts and now we can go into a very uh, domain specific language uh, you know as was said c for operating systems in uh, the ai course i teach we go into a whole different paradigm we go we we do uh, prologue programming which is where you just say these facts are true and the computer tells you okay well this is what's true about the world and that's literally how the programming language works it's totally inside out and backwards. So obviously, if you take a database course, you're going to be working in SQL. Um, by having the theory and the background that you have in a computer science uh, education, you have that flexibility. You have that ability to jump between languages. You'll become a, a technical polyglot. And that is that is obviously very useful, obviously very powerful. And then when you go into a job interview uh, and they say, have you worked in Java? you can say no but i've worked in other object oriented programming languages and you know my background shows that i'm able to uh, pick up uh, a new language very easily and especially when you're in that entry or mid-level uh, development interview having a track record of knowing uh, of, of learning a technology quickly is far more valuable than have you know walking in and saying oh i've worked in java for two years at my school and so obviously I know how to code in Java. They'd rather they'd rather you show that you can learn quickly. So that's that's one of the benefits. All right, thank you. And we're going to finish up here with one last question. Um, this student asks um, if I'm interested in computer information science, but I'm concerned about the level of math, would you recommend me continuing with CISC or look at a program like ISIT? 
OK, thank you for the question. Let me make sure my microphone is not mute. Yeah, thanks for the question. Well, I would say that it is it is a combination of everything uh, when you want to make that decision. Uh, you definitely need to sit down with your academic advisor and uh, your uh, success coach uh, in order to kind of make a decision like that, uh, because computer science is a combination of all of the above uh, that we mentioned, for example, programming, understanding the logical thinking, some mathematical background, understanding, for example, the, the reasoning. So these are all components of becoming a successful computer scientist, not having a strong mathematics or not getting a specific concept in mathematics is definitely not a single um, a single parameter that should throw you off the wagon or basically allows you, hey, I, I'm good at it, so let me become a computer scientist. No, I think it is a it is a it's a general decision. It's a it's a it's a it needs to be looked at in a kind of a um, more complete uh, picture of the uh, you have to look at it a more complete picture and see if you have any connection with the computer science if you follow the logical thinking if you can develop an algorithm if you can understand and identify an algorithm if you can um, can for example come up with some uh, ideas in that are core to computer science if you allow if you learn how to do that and if you can do that then you can become a computer scientist but if you don't have that for example interest or if you do not want to become follow that career path i think the isit will provide you that flexibility to not dive into those for example technical aspects or pure mathematical or kind of uh, details that we cover in computer scientists again Look at the career paths. Look at the career paths of a computer scientist versus a computer uh, and ISIT uh, graduates. The career paths should tell you exactly which career path you want to follow and if you have the resources or if you have the capability in terms of kind of the interest and if you are dedication to follow that path. But uh, I should I should tell you that, yeah, computer scientists tend to have very creative minds, tend to have uh, problem solving skills, tend to have uh, kind of uh, good mathematical intuition, not necessarily knowing to, uh, to uh, for example, find a, uh, a specific equation or solve a problem right off the, uh, off the bat, but they can propose solutions. They can come up with methods or ideas and they can implement it using computer codes. So I think we need, uh, it is not one uh, solution, uh, one answer that I can tell you, it needs to be developed. So after the first semester that you take it, after the second semester that you have the courses and our programs allow you the flexibility to transfer between programs. If you, for example, enter ISIT and after a semester and say, hey, you know what? I want to become a web developer. I want to become a uh, computer scientist then you can transfer and change your again of course the sooner the better you can transfer to another program so that flexibility is always available and your academic advisor i brian and other faculty are here to have this discussions with you have an honest candid discussion to tell you exactly where you want to get where you want to be what are your career goals and what is the reality what is your perform how is your performance and how we can best uh, serve you in terms of your educational goals. I hope that that uh, answered your questions. And of course, uh, please feel free to shoot me or Brian an email with your questions if Absolutely. you have any. So Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Sadari and Professor Brian Gray for coming Good. out, um, meeting with everybody today. Um, as they mentioned, their emails are there. Please feel free to reach out or even the admissions office at undergraduate admissions at harrisburgu.edu. Um, the link to previous recorded webinars is in the chat and this webinar will also be added to that link. Um, so feel free to look there if you want to review today's material. Um, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out and hopefully we see you on campus in the very near future. Be well everyone, stay safe. Thank you and goodbye.